Okay everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Jeff Kelly. We're with wikibon.org, and this is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of EMC World. We've been covering wall to wall the events here at EMC World from the keynotes of Joe Tucci and Pat Gelsinger. Uh, we had uh, numerous guests on, uh, senior executives. We had Sanjay Merchandani on today. We had a number of data scientists on. Uh, we had Don Basili start, the, giving us the startup angle. Dave Cahill, uh, both of those individuals from uh, Flash companies. Uh, uh, Violent Memory, about to go public, $800 million valuation. Uh, Solid Fire, just getting started um, uh, with product in the market. And um, uh, we had Chuck Hollis on, it was fantastic. Tony Kolish, who runs uh, EMC Services. Uh, on and on, just you know, fantastic. Laura Mattingly from Louisville Gas and Electric. Uh, a, a fantastic uh, a case study for, from a practitioner's point of view. And, um, and we just wrapped up with the Data science segment, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, I thought it was um, pretty useful to hear from Richard Snee. I think they've done a really good job of bringing together a community and providing thought leadership as a, as a source of really great value for that community. Um, you know, it's not contributing code to open source, but in a way, it's like that. Right? It's, it's, but it, yeah, it's definitely delivering value. I mean, uh, it, it, we talk about data science as being a team sport and collaborative. Uh, that, that goes for, you know, when you're, uh, you know, in your office doing the work, but it also goes for, you know, collaborating with colleagues in other companies and other organizations at events like this. So, so. I think that, you know, the, the theme of this event is transformation. Everybody's got it on their, their shirts. Uh, you're seeing it on the water bottles. It's probably on the hotel. You know, I think it is. Cards, right? Is it? Yeah, I'm sure it is. They got this guy, yep, transform. You know, it's really all about transformation. Um, so what does that mean, IT plus business plus yourself? Um, our take on that is, well, IT transformation is all about the cloud, new business models, uh, more facile, agile infrastructure, and um, you know, it's happening. We've dubbed 2012 the year of the cloud. We're seeing it in our Wikibon survey data that it's, it's actually you know, catching on, right? And uh, more than catching on, it's fundamentally uh, very few organizations aren't doing something in the cloud. But the more interesting thing to me, Jeff, is this business transformation. What is that all about? We've said it's all about data. It's all about extracting value, mining value from the data, packaging data products, getting insights, mm -hmm. and actually becoming proficient in analysis and analyzing data for competitive advantage. Um, I think this, to me, is the most significant sea change we've seen in technology in a long, long time. Um, you know, it's as big, I think, as the internet, I think it's as big as the, as the PC was itself because the impacts on productivity mm -hmm. are going to be enormous. And I think of productivity as, you know, very simply, revenue per employee is a you know, simple measure of productivity. And uh, I think that we're seeing the masses now being able to potentially tap into analytics. Mm -hmm. But we're not there yet, are we? I mean, we yeah. are in, Somebody said it, the, f the f early, early part of the first inning, you know, of, a, mm -hmm. of an extra innings game. Yeah. So, um, good talk, good ideas, but in terms of people actually figuring out how to monetize data, it's confined to the large web giants, and even some of them are struggling, like Facebook. Right. Um, uh, but certainly, you know, guys like LinkedIn are sort of figuring it out, Bitly is, you know, trying to figure it out, uh, clearly Google has mm -hmm. figured out, Yahoo's doing a lot of work there as well, but it's very early days, you're not seeing yet the commercial enterprise really, really take that data, package it, and shift their business models toward a data-centric business model. It's early, isn't it? Right, and there's a few reasons for that. Part of it is the technology. Um, you know, the Hadoop ecosystem is very immature, it's growing, but it's, it's still, you know, it's still very early days for Hadoop. Uh, the MPP data warehouse uh, area is more mature, but that's still a fairly young technology. So. Uh, so part of it is that, and then of course, what we've been talking about all day here today is uh, data science, data scientists, and those professionals that can actually take all that data, have the skills, both technical, business, communication, and uh, the personality type, the exploratory nature, uh, exploratory personality types, to, to turn that all into insight. And then of course, the last mile, is translating that insight into action. So, and we're, most organizations are a long way from that. Um, I've had some interesting discussions today with uh, s some of the members of the Green Plum team, uh, some members of the EMC uh, uh, business process management team, and talking about integrating analytic insights into business processes. And I think we're in very early days there, because ultimately, you've got to take action. You've got to impact how you do business. It's not enough to find an insight. It's then got to be translated into an action that actually delivers value. Well, and you're talking about that last mile. That last mile is all about people. 
-hmm. You really can't take the people out of that, that last decision-making sequence. And, um, and again, that's the third part of the transformation that EMC's talking about, it's transform yourself. Um, and they're talking about you know, services that, that they're, they're delivering, educational services mm -hmm. and the like, which again, I think is really smart. I mean, you see EMC as a company, they get a lot of resources now, they're, they're acting like a much, much bigger player. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen that transformation of the company, and now we're seeing, touch, seeing the company touch upon all these little pieces that are like a mosaic that fits together. You've got the virtualization piece, you've got the infrastructure, you've got the cloud, you've got big data, you've got a sets of services now, focused on, on, on new training and new capabilities. You've got some fantastic messaging that the entire industry is getting behind, cloud meets big data, and you also are now seeing with the, we just had Richard Snee on talking about the Data Science Summit, EMC really leading the charge around data science and yep. uh, putting together a pretty high quality uh, program. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Absolutely, I mean, I, I think what struck me, you know, day one of the, uh, the conference here was Joe Tucci's keynote, and he led with big data and predictive analytics and the data universe, and it was all about big data translating to business value. Uh, and for a company like EMC, for that to be the, the kickoff, the lead message, I think says a lot about where their priorities are, and they're definitely looking to the future and starting to lay the groundwork. I mean, this is, this is kind of, uh, kind of you know, planting the seeds, and this is going to blossom over the years for them as they uh, contribute to the community in the form of these types of resources around Data Science Summit and other, other resources. So, uh, you know, they're, they're preparing their customer base for what, you know, really can be a uh, revolutionary approach to uh, data and making decisions. You know, it's interesting too to hear Joe Tucci talk about the waves. He's always talking about the waves. And, you know, what, what catches my eye in that in the ear is that it's not just a, a history lesson, it is, but you get a sense that it's a fundamental part of Joe Tucci's planning paradigm. And here's what I mean by that. He grew up in an era of mainframe and mini computers where great companies like DG and his old company, Wang and Prime mm -hmm. and Apollo and now Sun Microsoft, all these great companies, digital, disappeared mm -hmm. off the face of the earth. I mean, these were, these were high flyers, you know, changing the world, disruptive innovation, and they just went out of business. Not, not, not one of they disappeared. They either got acquired, some of them actually went out of business, mm -hmm. um, or faded into irrelevancy. And so, um, and, and IBM itself, which had a huge monopoly in the business. People don't realize that in IBM's heyday, it had two thirds of the industry's revenue. The IT, you know, the, so if the IT industry's a, a three trillion dollar business, that's a two trillion dollar company. Okay, that's how big IBM was. It accounted for 50% of the profits of the industry. And IBM essentially gave its monopoly up to start upstarts, Intel and Microsoft. Right. And so we saw that and, and, and we saw just huge, massive uh, uh, infrastructures of companies built up over years just torn down, mm -hmm. game changing. And I think that today's executive is highly cognizant of that. The, the executives of places like Cisco, like EMC, like SAP, certainly Intel and Microsoft, reinventing themselves. Look at a company like Microsoft, who many, many people predicted, you know, rough times ahead for the company. Uh, well, granted, it's not the high flying, you know, stock that it used to be, but, the, but Microsoft as a company is just still highly relevant um, and, and has navigated through many, many challenges and is, you know, continues to do so with cloud and, 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 and analytics and the like. Um, you know, Oracle's another one. So these companies, the CEOs, I think, are very cognizant of the fact that if they make fundamental strategic mistakes, they could be in big trouble. And so I think that Tucci's driving his strategy with that in mind, trying to take advantage of these new waves. And, and also recognizing that the, what's, what's, what's buttering the bread today, the core products, is going to change. The value proposition of those core products is going to change. There's going to be a tax from other sectors of the industry, and so EMC is investing in new places, in new growth, and bringing in new acquisitions. So it's really building uh, a quite intelligent portfolio and uh, that throws off a lot of cash and is becoming a major force in the industry. Mm -hmm. Well the key is, it's a balance. When you're a, a large successful company and you see the next wave coming, when do you get on that wave? Because you've, you've got your core business that's, that, that's really paying the bills today, but you know you've got to make the shift. So the key is you get on early, you, you've got to know when to, when to kind of 
get on that wave. And we're seeing not just EMC, we were at Sapphire last week. Uh, you know, uh, SAP is a company that's you know moving from their core ERP business, on-premise ERP business, to uh, you know they're calling themselves now a big data company, uh, very much investing in mobile and cloud. Uh, so they've got a balancing act as well. So I think we're seeing this across the board, and it's going to be really interesting over the next few years to see which of the, the the big vendors today actually make that transition successfully. Yeah. So I mean, it used to be you would see these startups come out of nowhere and you know then become extremely prominent companies. Um, well, that certainly happened with Google and Facebook. It's happening in social and mm -hmm. and 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 you know that side of cloud. In the enterprise, the enterprise is a whole different ball game, folks. You're talking about five or six large companies that control the chessboard. It's IBM, it's HP, it's Cisco, it's Intel, it's Microsoft. Um, you know, Dell certainly to a certain extent, but EMC and VMware, SAP, I would put in there as well. EMC and VMware, I might have missed one or two, but I don't think so. Those are really the the, the big, Oracle is the one I missed, the companies that are really driving um, the business. And when one makes a move on a chessboard, like EMC buys you know, VMware, wow, that is you know, a major factor. Uh, Oracle buying Sun really shifted things. But these companies have so much money now uh, that they're able to withstand those shifts. They're able to respond fast enough. Their executives aren't foolish enough to think that they can rest on their laurels, you know, it's like Andy Grove said, only the paranoid survive, and so we're seeing companies transform before our eyes in really dramatic ways. You know, Oracle becoming a hardware company overnight, EMC becoming, you know, no longer a storage company. Right. Um, you know, and focusing on big data. And, and so, you're seeing SAP, we heard them last week, completely transforming the company into mobile, and cloud, and in-memory in analytics in real time. Um, these are new value propositions, they're, they're catching new waves, um, they're risky uh, because they're spending a lot of money and if they don't work, they're going to be left with a legacy business that they have essentially said, we've got to move in a new direction. So, so they've got to really pick their spots carefully, but I think that, that these executives have done a very good job of that, these companies are listening to their customers um, and you're, you're not seeing the massive missteps uh, that you saw in the in the 80s and early 90s. You're seeing a much more prescriptive and deliberate and intelligent and thoughtful attack on market opportunities. Um, I'm waiting for one of these guys to blow up, um, <laughs> you know, but we haven't seen that yet. When Oracle has a hole in its product line or an EMC or whomever, IBM, it goes out and acquires companies. Right. And uh, so they've, they've been reinventing themselves and I think that, I think, Oligopoly is the right word, you know? And mm -hmm. oligopoly is actually, in a way it's good for customers because it's stable. Mm -hmm. um, in a way it's, you know, less exciting because you don't have as many, you know, rocket ship startups coming up and, and disrupting uh, these, these, these orders, but it's good for entrepreneurs because they can sell their companies to these oligopolies. So, we're seeing this sort of new shift in, in enterprise tech and uh, it's, it's, it's exciting, you know, the enterprise tech is hot again. Um, we're here, we're live at EMC World. We're, we'll be back tomorrow with day three. Let me just give you a little sense as to what's coming here. Um, we've got some big executives coming on tomorrow. Uh, Joe Tucci has announced that, uh, that he's going to stay on. As you guys may know, uh, Tucci was going to retire. And um, basically they said it was going to be internal candidates. So there were three candidates bantied around. Um, uh, Dave Goulden, uh, Pat Gelsinger, and Howard Elias. Goulden's the CFO, Gelsinger of course runs basically all products and Elias runs all services. Three seasoned execs, um, all very qualified, and each is going to be in the cube uh, tomorrow. So, you know, they're not, we're not going to you know, go into the succession plan because they're <laughs> not going to answer it, uh, but we can talk about it you know, amongst ourselves. Sure. Um, you know, I think that there's some really interesting capabilities that, uh, that, that, that Goulden has. He used to run sales and now he runs finance. You know, Gelsinger, obviously a, a legend. Mm -hmm. You know, he brings a lot. So uh, he's basically very close to uh, to to VMware. And basically, you know, works out of those offices. Very close to Paul Moritz. Been a lot of talk about um, you know Gelsinger's Intel and Moritz's Microsoft. That's the new Wintel. Um, I I have said uh, that I actually think that that uh, that Goulden is the front runner because he's got um, a more well-rounded uh, background for Wall Street. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, that's, uh, it's customers mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's Wall Street that CIOs, CEOs spend a lot of time with. Yeah, we like to think they spend time with analysts and media and so forth, but, 
but the customers are number one. Employees are probably, the customers number one, employees number two, and you know, making sure the street is happy is number three. Maybe it's not that right order, but so Goulden knows that game. Although Gelsinger has started to show up on the quarterly conference calls more, mm -hmm. so that's kind of an interesting development. Um, I think Elias um, is probably the long shot mm -hmm. here, uh, even though I think he's qualified. Uh, but he's, I tell you, since this whole talk about succession has come to, f to the fore, I've seen, I've seen Elias really step up his game. Very smooth, very on point, um, very strategic, you know, uh, with great leadership quality. So, um, although I, 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 I do think he's the long shot, I think Goulden's Gulden, the favorite. Um, but you never know, right? You know, so uh, so like I say, we'll be watching that. Uh, uh, we'll keep on a silicon angle. We're probably not going to go into it with these guys tomorrow. It just wouldn't be appropriate because they're not going to say anything about it. We also have Tom Roloff coming on, who runs uh, EMC Consulting. He's a great guest. Always have really enjoyed his uh, his discussions um, on the cube. Chad Sakic, the Wild Man, is coming on. Uh, so that is really you know face melting. Brian Gallagher, we had Richard Apollo Tom on today, his counterpart from the, uh, the, the Symmetrics division is going to be on. Um, and then a number of other folks, technologists, mm -hmm. uh, we got folks from VMware, uh, we got folks from Rackspace coming on. It's just, you know, it should be a great day. And of course we end with, uh, with, with Howard Elias and, uh, and, and, and then the, the CTO of VCE. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. We'll be covering it. Uh, my colleague John Furrier is out at the HBase conference, and he's there covering that wall to wall. Uh, this is theCUBE, this is SiliconAngle.tv's flagship product that brings you the smartest people in the industry. We extract the signal from the noise. Uh, we share with you our community uh, what's going on here. We, our goal is to be real time on the floor, cover these events like nobody else covers them, bring an independent perspective. We thank you for watching. We, uh, we appreciate your tweets. Uh, I'm at D Vellante. Uh, he's at Jeffrey T. Kelly. F. Close. Jeffrey F. F Kelly. Kelly. Jeffrey F. Kelly, sorry. Uh, at Furrier is my co host. Um, so thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, thanks to Alex, Kean, and Mark. And thanks to everybody back at uh, SiliconANGLE Wikibon watching the stream. Uh, the page is up, the Shock and Awe page. Jeff, you put that up last night. Indeed. Uh, go to Wikibon, you'll see EMC World 2012 for all the coverage, mm -hmm. independent, original content from Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, we appreciate your support and uh, we will see you tomorrow. So don't miss day three, EMC World will be there. Wall to wall coverage live from SiliconANGLE.TV. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>